Welcome back to another video. A huge bombshell just dropped. This past 24 hour news cycle has been nothing but insane with millions of dollars moving in the betting markets. It's mainly due to Ann Seltzer's polling out of Iowa. Historically, she's been pretty accurate. In 2016, she had Trump winning the state of Iowa by six. He may have won it by nine. In 2020, she was off by a single point, and it was highly indicative of the rest of the Rust Belt. But Iowa nowadays has been, according to Ann Seltzer, who's supposed to be the most accurate pollster ever, this 70-year-old lady who's nearing retirement has said that Kamala Harris is up by three percentage points in the state that Trump, again, is likely to win by 10. How can that be the case? Is every single other pollster pundit, even on CNN, are they wrong? And is Inselsa right? Or is she maybe a fledgling? near retirement, liberal in the closet that just wants to throw a Hail Mary to see if it so much as helps Kamala. And as seen by the Chicago Bears only a week ago, that Hail Mary might make the difference. Let's break it down. First and foremost, you might ask me, well, Lalo, how does one poll, even if it's high in clout, how is that going to change the perception of the race? But undoubtedly, it totally has for maybe a third of the population that's very political. Online, we have liberals very much, if not cautiously optimistic because of this. They're definitely over the moon about it. It's like if you had a really reputable person in a community endorse a complete scumbag of a person, you'd say, well, you know, of course the pastor, like, why would he lie? But it turns out he probably is because, again, mathematically speaking, if you look at the polling, it makes no sense that Kamala Harris, who's losing the popular vote to Donald Trump right now, according to the mainstream media, would be winning Iowa by three. Again, for context, Trump won Iowa by like seven percentage points four years ago. He's likely to win it by like 10. The conversation is more akin to him winning it by like 15 rather than him losing it at all. In fact, for in Seltzer to say Iowa is D plus three is to say that Trump would win Michigan by 10. It's just asinine. It won't happen. And I wish it were true, but it's not true at all. And so for this reason all alone, it's debunked. But let's actually look at what the material effects were in the betting markets. First and foremost, Donald Trump is down 4% on a, on a, just on a most frequently updated basis. In fact, Iowa, which will go 100% for Donald Trump, like definitely will go for Trump. In fact, I'm telling you right now, if Kamala Harris wins Iowa, come next week, I will delete my YouTube channel. My last video will be me cutting a limb off or something. I don't know, man. This is insane. And by the way, for this to be 17% odds of Kamala winning is astounding. And if you look at this, I mean, you can see that even in a week, look at that spike up for Iowa. You know, they had Kamala at like a 5% a 5% chance of winning the state, which is, again, kind of reasonable. And then it went up all the way to 21 points, 25% odds of, again, Trump losing Iowa. It's asinine. Minnesota will flip Republic, Republican 100 times before Iowa goes the other way. And so just keep this in your head, okay? It's not gone Republican since I think Mitt Romney lost it to Obama in 2012. Those were a very different time, of course. But now that we understand why maybe this is a piece of, maybe it's a PSYOP, and by PSYOP, again, this is somewhat of a new term, but basically PSYOP as in psychological operation, you know, you can have a liberal who is in the closet like Ann Seltzer, who, you know, a lot of pollsters pretend to be neutral, like how CNN says their news, but they're likely not most of the time. Well, think of that poll by Ann Seltzer as less of a poll, but more so an editorial of what ought to be. In fact, when you look at the recall percentage, which again refers to what percentage of the people interviewed in a survey for a poll voted for either candidate in 2020, it was a net Biden plus two. Now, most pollsters have a Democrat oversampling bias, even the Republican leaning ones apparently. Though, for it to be D plus two in Iowa is asinine as Trump won the state by seven, which means they're skewing the poll nine points to the left. So if anything, you would look at it and if you were to weight it properly, it would show that um, if you add nine points to Kamala winning by three in Iowa, that would be a Trump plus six result. So the bias in and of itself just shows itself with that. Not even getting started with all the cross tabs that show that elderly people are voting for Kamala all of a sudden, that the white rural farmer is going to vote for uh, for Kamala more so than they did for Biden. Again, doesn't really make sense. But let's see what Charlie Kirk has to say about this because I think this is pretty uh, pretty logical here. So if Kamala were really competitive in Iowa, why hasn't Tim Walls visited, let alone Kamala? Tim is the governor next door in Minnesota. If there was even a remote hope, he would be camping out there, obviously. She hasn't spent any of her money in Iowa because she knows she'll lose big. Um, the poll is fake and his media designed as a tactic to suppress turnout, which again, touches another subject. I was going to make a video about the House of Representatives, but that might be pushed down, uh, pushed down the line until like 12 hours from now because I'm busy. But this is a bigger deal. 
bigger deal because people will see these polls and they'll scramble like cockroaches. A lot of Republicans will be like, oh, well, how's that? Oh, my God, we're going to lose the election. How about you trust the plan, folks? Eight years, people that have been supporting Trump since they were children, basically, are like, oh, it's game over. It's like, okay, well, you know what? We don't need you, frankly. What the hell? And so this is a great point. Like, yeah, if Iowa were competitive, why is Kamala spending today in Michigan? Why is she spending Election Day on Tuesday, three rallies apparently, in Pennsylvania? Why is she there? And if Iowa was competitive, then so would a ton of states. I mean, Arizona would be in the bag for the Democrats. They put money in Arizona, North Carolina. Why would they be campaigning there? I mean, why not campaign in places like uh, Texas? Yeah, why not campaign in Florida or Texas or South Carolina if you're winning Iowa? Or Indiana, for instance. I mean, Obama won in 2008, right? Come on, be logical. Also, one of the uh, Kamala cats, I think some of them call themselves right now, this guy, Ryan, this was posted prior to the poll, by the way, um, like an hour and a half before this guy, Ryan says, Seltzer is about to drop a Kamala plus three poll source, major campaign surrogate, not joking, mark my words. Okay. So this was again, a few hours before it even dropped. And then um, when it uh, dropped this puffer fish, which is, again, is a liberal account. Look at the Ukraine flag. Puffer fish says, was it a lucky guess? Comma, are you legit? Um, Ryan says, no, I was, uh, serious. JB Pritzker just fully mentioned it at a Duke Democrats meeting. And it was like, oh wait, that's not supposed to be released until later today's oops. And my jaw fell to the floor. So think about that. Some, you know, a one-off this fat, you know, governor, which has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. But anyway, JB Pritzker just let the cat out the bag on accident saying, oh yeah, there's going to be this very favorable poll coming out. Well, what the fuck? You're not supposed to know the polls coming out until it's out, unless you're conducting the poll yourself. The only way you would know is if it's a Democrat internal poll, which again would be extremely biased because Ann Seltzer is supposed to be an independent source for polling, a historic, you know, very popular person. But yet that governor somehow knew Democrat, of course. So it shows that not only is the insider information already in a collusion sort of sense, already being promulgated among the elites in the Democratic Party. Two, that JB should keep his mouth shut, but I guess given the body size, you can tell he can't really keep it shut for too long. Three would be, of course, that this getting out only proves how likely it's been that other polls are in the same facet in the bag of the Democratic media structure and Kamala Harris by proxy. So this is nuts. Nuts. Also, let's look into some of the meat of this. Again, we're going to think radical politics for a lot of the argument here. But look, democracy and abortion were the top two issues on the Seltzer poll, which doesn't make sense. Okay, democracy as a titular issue is likely like the sixth to 12th priority for the average median voter. Again, so think about it. The biggest things for voters nowadays will be immigration, inflation, the economy, crime, safety, abortion, and that order vaguely. So for democracy to be at the top is literally ridiculous. I mean, it'd be like number eight behind like transportation and infrastructure, probably. And then abortion. Yeah, that might be a top two issue for Democrats, but top two issue for most people, definitely not. Maybe fourth in general. But for it to be a top two issue in Iowa of all places doesn't really make sense. Now, the 2020 recall, though, I lowballed it. It was supposed to be two from what I remember. It was actually Biden plus five in a state that Trump won in eight, by 8.3 in 2020. So again, that's a 13 point deficit, 13 point bias for Kamala to only win it by three, which means that really she's underscoring the Biden supporter support by two. And then if you look at the Emerson poll, Trump is up 10 and the Trump recall vote was 8.1 margin of error type stuff. But then again, she's underscoring, uh, underscoring Biden when you look at the math behind this all by two. She's all, and then Trump is overperforming by two as well. So what that either means is that Trump is probably up by two or maybe even four in Iowa relative to last election cycle, which makes sense because he's up everywhere. Or it could be that Kamala and that 13 point bias is actually correct. What's more likely Trump up by two in Iowa or Kamala flips it by like 15 or something. I mean, it's just it's nauseating. Now, Steve Kornacki, who's a very nerdy, kind of like affable, cute person, as much as like a 40 year old man can be. Again, not gay, but, you know, you, you get what I'm talking about, okay? You've seen what he looks like on what, CNN? Point being is that the guy's pretty affable, but then he comes in with this stupid, stupid rationalization for the Ann Zelser poll, which probably means that he's in the bag of those types, which, again, was already known, but you gave him the benefit of the doubt, but not so much anymore for Steve here because he claims that the Des Moines Register poll had Trump up by 18 versus Biden in June, which was a lot, but, again, you know, maybe. And then in July... Iowa's six-week abortion ban goes into effect. 
which again isn't a big deal polling wise and then september dmr shows that 59 uh to 37 percent opposition to the new abortion law 69 percent among women shows that trump's lead over harris is just 47 to 43 now steve kernacki is defending that that same des moines register poll that had trump up by over harris by four is now uh harris plus three so what steve kernacki is begging us to believe is that in about five weeks Trump somehow lost 7% of the vote on net. How the fuck is that even possible? Where did even Kamala lose that vote to anybody? Seven points is insane at the national level, but even in Iowa, seven points either way is nuts. No Trump person would ever say, oh yeah, Trump's up in Iowa by 15. Nobody would say that. 12, maybe. 15 is nuts. But in this case, Steve Kornacki is begging us to believe ignorance really is provided according to these guys, just by gifts, because we're supposed to just be stupid lemmings that just believe what he says, to where we'd even believe that Harris would be up seven relative to where she was five weeks ago. Again, on what basis? Oh, the abortion thing that went into effect that months ago. Well, isn't that the case for Ohio as well and other places? Or let's say in places where they did enact a ban, that they would what? That it would crush Trump? Why? In fact, Nevada, and again, credit to Red Eagle for bringing this up, but Nevada is very pro-choice in sentiment. I mean, you go to Vegas, you could imagine plenty of abortion going on. Okay, how is Trump up in that state relative to the early vote expectation and everything thus far if this abortion is such a crushing issue? But the truth is, is that it isn't for Teflon Don because he triangulated on the position like he's Bill Clinton in the 90s in Prime 4. Okay, so when we get a Tyson knockout of Kamala Harris in a political realm on Tuesday... It's going to be brilliant and all these bastards, these sick puppies in all reality that are trying to push, oh, this Ann Seltzer poll, which is nothing but a biased, hokey, Hail Mary of a political ploy. It's going to blow up in their face and I'm going to love every second of it. And so until then, I'll see y'all on the next one. Adios. Like the video if you haven't liked it. Subscribe if you haven't yet and comment down below. All right. Bye.